Hey friends, Chris Baholka here. Today I'm going to show you how the industry cuts, the fly tying industry, cuts their rabbit strip and other furs into strips. Now you can take a hide like this, make your rabbit strips. If you happen to be someplace you can get furs where you can get a hold of things like uh, raccoon or skunk or if you want to make really big flies, things like coyote. I'm going to show you how to make the device that cuts these. Now this has been pretty much an industry secret. I did do a thorough search of YouTube and every place I could find and I haven't seen anybody else show you how this is done. So this is something I learned working in the industry, the fly fishing industry, and uh, I'm going to show you how to make this device today, so follow along. People that are fans of my uh, channel will recognize this little device. I made this and showed you how to use it to cut mylar for mylar strips for flash in your flies. I've had people make ones like this and tell me I tried to cut fur with it but it won't cut fur. It's a different technology. First off the strips are wider but it also has to be done a little bit differently. So what we're going to show you in this video is how to make this cutter. It doesn't take much material, some razor blades, some epoxy, a little bit of foil and some spacers and you can cut hides probably for the rest of your natural life with this very simply and, and uh, quickly. If you're doing entire hides in the places that cut a full rabbit pelt or a full squirrel pelt into uh, strips have these that are significantly wider with a lot more blades. I'm only going to make one with like six blades in it today so you can see how it's done and that will probably provide you for as long as you tie flies with uh, strips of fur. So let's get started. So what you're going to need to make this device is some aluminum foil. We're going to use this to form the shape of it. I use little stir sticks. These are quarter inch stir sticks. 22 millimeters quarter inch. You get them at every place that serves coffee and stuff. These are going to be the spacers that go between the uh, blades to give me the, the correct distance so they're all even. Like I see these are quarter inch and that's about what I like my rabbit strips to be when I'm uh, cutting strips, whatever kind of fur. So we need four or five of these. I like to use a hot melt glue gun to place everything in the right spot. Stir stick and you're mixing for your epoxy and some epoxy and a couple ounces is all you need to make this little tray. To start Oh, one other thing I forgot to mention, you do need to make this are the blades. These are box knife utility blades you get at a hardware store or anywhere. They're the interchangeable blades for your utility knife. You want to make spacers that are no wider than the base of the blades. So I'm going to make a little mark here to get me started. Get rid of that round end and I'm going to mark the length of the blade on those. It's like that so those are the same same as the base of the blade because you don't want to have too much more stick sticking out on the sides. And then I just use a pair of scissors or shears to cut these sticks. I don't usually have to do anything fancy. Just cut them like that. And when you get about two sticks or three sticks worth cut that's all you're going to need and again those will be like that. What we're going to do is we're going to glue the blades with the hot melt glue to the side like that. So to get these in place I'm just going to take one of my blades, hold it right up to the edge of the glue and put a couple drops of glue on there. Doesn't take much because you're just tacking it in place and then stand it up so the blade is straight up and hold it for a minute till it cools. Once that's cooled straight up, that piece is done and I'm going to go ahead and do this with six my six other blades. So now that I've got all of them attached on one side, I'm going to attach them together. The way you do this is you stand the first one up and use something that's got some weight to it. I'll just use my little scissors here because they've got a lot of weight so it stands up by itself. 
scoot the next one into it so it's got a spacer between the two blades and then put a drop of hot melt glue down inside like that you want to keep the points of these all as even as you can once those two are set like that hot melt glue there we go wasn't quite cool off enough yet plus it was stuck to my finger <laughs> so now we'll just put another one up there next to it again try to keep the, the points of the blades all even across drop a glue in so it hits the blade and the divider or the blade and the stick in between so it keeps that space and if you get a little on top of the cable scrape that off later We'll just keep doing that until we get all of them hooked together here. We'll put an extra stick on here just to make sure that everything stays stable while this all cools down. About like that. Now you notice I didn't run glue, I'm not going to move that for a second, but I didn't run glue all the way across between at the base, because at the base of the blades there are holes. When I put epoxy in around this, to finish this out, to hold these all in place, I want the glue, the epoxy, to be able to go through those holes between the blades and fill in the gaps there. So it's really solid and secure and the blades don't move around. Now once this is cooled, if it happens to be hung up on the table or whatever your work surface is a um, little a chisel or something you go under one end of it and pop it loose the hot melt glue shouldn't stick to your probably to your table um, we're going to make the form of this now now i don't probably need to tell you at this point that these are sharp it's the whole exercise basically is to making a sharp thing a big sharp thing out of small sharp things so you don't want to leave the blades lay around when there's kids around or pets and make sure if you drop anything on the floor you pick it up so you don't cut yourself up and you can touch these if you handle them carefully they won't cut you if you run your finger down them they will cut you so in making this foil base here we need to make sure that we're careful handling the blades and what I'm going to do is set the blades on like that and you want to be able to fold the foil up so it comes about halfway up the blades so about that much foil maybe a quarter of an inch and actually probably you could even measure with one of my quarter inch measuring sticks quarter inch on that side from the base and i'm going to do a quarter inch on this other side as well and i'm going to mark it with my sharpie this is not an exact science by any means at this point. Then I'm going to cut my foil to that width that I marked. So it's just wide enough to come up on each side of the razor blades. About like that. So now if I set this on here and don't worry about cleaning up like I say all the little bits of glue you'll do that later one side could fold up tight against the blades on this side so it's going to form a, a dam for the epoxy on this side and then I'm going to fold the other side up as well the back side and one thing I forgot to tell you is you can put a little bit of glue on this to hold it you don't want a whole bunch because you don't want to hold it up off the foil too much but a little dab on each side i was wondering why it was moving so much like that let it cool will hold everything in place you can see i've got equal amounts of foil on both sides we'll leave the length here we need the length in the forming of the base of this so now i'm going to fold the foil up on one side about like that spin it around fold the foil up on the other side like that and I'm going to fold it all the way out on both sides 
to form a, a little reservoir for epoxy. No exact measurements on this, you just want it to be six, seven inches long. You need to form a base of epoxy on this to hold everything steady later on. We'll show you how that goes. Again, fold up the back side there and make little squishy corners. The main thing is that your blades are captured inside the reservoir and you've got a nice long base like this. So to mix my epoxy I've got two small measuring cups to measure equal amounts part A and part B and a mixing container and my stir stick. This is uh, East Coast resin epoxy part A and B. I like it because it stays a little bit flexible for a day or so after you mix it so you can uh, bend things a little bit if you need to but in this case we won't hopefully need to do that so we're going to pour equal amounts here of A and B if you haven't watched any of my epoxy videos you might want to take those in give you some good tips on epoxies to use and how to mix them properly try to get it without a drip there part A and I have warmed these up to about 80 degrees by setting them in a bath of warm water now I'm going to try to match the levels the other with part B there we go now we're going to add them into our mixing cup and this epoxy takes about 24 hours or so to set up so don't be expecting it will be ready to use tonight or or later in the day because uh, it's going to take a bit but it's a it's a good epoxy it's not five minute because five minute epoxy making this much of it would cost you an arm and a leg and we're trying to save money here not spend it so there's part A pour part B into it then we'll mix and I'm not caring about bubbles on this I'm going to mix this fairly quickly because it says to mix it for several minutes carefully I'm going to mix it pretty quick it's going to get some bubbles but that's just the way it is for our demonstration here and as you know when you mix epoxy it'll have streaks in it when you get it mixed well it'll clear if you don't mix it till it clears chances are it may set up and be tacky and never that tack will never go away <coughs> excuse me this epoxy says several minutes to mix and it is taking a little bit longer than I had anticipated for the video but we want to make sure it's mixed well and cleared so our device will work properly and there it's clearing up okay now that it's properly mixed we're going to pour it into our mold here and I want to make sure that it flows between the blades so I can actually in the middle here just pour right over the blades so it gets in between all of them fills up that space and it'll run down the blades and now I want to make sure that I get the area clear out to the end filled so we have a clamping area for our device when we use it by doing this like I said before there's holes in the bottoms of the blade little notches where it connects into the the grip on a utility knife so the epoxy flows through it and fills up the area as well and levels out between the blades so they're held in place really well this will have to set 24 hours to cure but I do have another version of it here exactly the same thing one less blade so I'm just gonna set this off to the side to cure 
and we'll do our demonstration on how to use it with this other thigh blade model. So now that our unit is dry, and it flexed into shape, we're going to take it and we're going to attach it to the side of a table. And you have to have something that the points can hang out over the side of the table. So those points will stick out and then you have to clamp it down or hook it down to the table. Uh, you could duct tape it, although it wouldn't be the best, most secure way. I like to use uh, clamps. These are woodworking clamps. Whatever you happen to use, of course, will work. But you want to be secure so those blades aren't moving around when you're, when you're using it to cut stuff. So now it's clamped in place. Now when we make our cuts, when you have your fur, this is rabbit. If you want to do standard zonker cuts, you want the cuts to run long ways. If you're going to do cross cut for wrapping them, you want to turn your fur so it runs perpendicular to the blades, runs this way. But we're going to do some straight zonker cuts. And to show you a little bit better so you can see a little bit better, this is a uh, um, badger and nice smooth tan. We're going to just start and the way you do this is you just push, hold your back hand down and push so the blades go down through the fur and then you're going to pull down with the front hand and this hand's going to slide this way but you have to be real careful of those blades in the back. So we're going to start and we'll slide. You don't want to get it hung up on the back points of the blades. Let it slide through like that. There you have a nice stripped badger hide. That will make some beautiful zonkers. And you can just do the other side if you want. Get extra fur picked up there. But the secret to this is just letting it slide through the blades. Do some with the rabbit here. Again going the same way. Blades through it. Let the back hand come forward. Do not get into those blades. There's your nice strip rabbit hide. We'll pull those part ends apart. You can go back and just continue on. Punching through, slide them across. And you'll have a whole hide of nicely cut strips. As I've said on some of my other videos, this isn't rocket science. This is just using some craft skills and applying them to what you want to end up with. Now, I want to remind you this is sharp. You don't want this where the little kids can get a hold of it. Somebody whacked their sister or brother with it or the dog's chewing on it. You want to keep this somewhere secure that you know where it is with access and uh, it's not going to hurt the little guys and gals. As long as you keep watching my videos, liking them and commenting on them, I'll keep sharing my knowledge and making them for you. So please remember to subscribe and tell your friends too if they haven't already. And we'll see you next time.